few weeks ago, I did a live demo for WorldWideWoodTurners.org. And in that demo, I demonstrated a very easy to make DIY chuck that was shown to us previously by Mr. Jim Duxbury. It's an ingenious little piece. It's, it's, you can make it with a couple of pieces of scrap wood. It's really easy to make. I've got a short on it out there somewhere and you'll see me using it extensively in the demo. It's like I said, it's, it's very easy to make. Anyway, during that demo, I demonstrated a number of off-center turnings. You can use them for pendants. You can use them for inlays or insets in the tops of boxes. You can do any number of things with them. For example, these are two of the things that you'll see me working on in the demo. This one is resin. And this one is ash juniper and I've got it on an angle. Anyway, like I said, you can, you can use these for any number of things. Uh, this one's gonna have to be redone because I got some chip out on it because I was rushing. Uh, but that's no big deal, I've got enough material here. This one will probably be used as uh, an inlay for the top of a box. This one probably for the same thing, but those I will do at a later date. What I'm going to be working on after the demo, I'm going to show you, I'm going to finish two of the pieces that I turned and, and take them to final finish. Uh, one will be a set of earrings and the other one is uh, going to be a pendant. At least that's my plan for now. So watch the demo. You'll only hear my side of the conversation. Uh, you won't be able to hear them because I was on earbuds. but that's okay. I'm just, basically, I just want to show you what you can do with this little chuck because it's, it's just so versatile. You can do so much with it and you're going to see me use it quite a bit more in future videos to come. So let's get on with the demo and I hope you all enjoy it. I'm going to do a quick sand on this with some 120. Let's smooth it up a little. I have my dust collector on. This is in zero orientation. What I call my uh, zero zero starting point. It's centered in the jaw at my number one registration mark and I've got this set at number one as well. And I set this so that it was parallel to the chuck itself. So my first, the first designs I'm going to cut into this will be centered on this little piece. I have an idea for this pendant. We'll see if it turns out. And I have discovered with this that sometimes less is more. So we're not going to put a whole lot of cuts in it. I'm using a quarter inch crown detail gouge. That I freshly sharpened, so I should be getting very nice cuts. And they are. So now that that's done, the fun begins. What do you mean, Billy? So we're going to loosen this. I'm going to move this down to number th three, I think. And I'm going to turn this so that it's now perpendicular. 
I'm going to line my point up with the slot so that I know it's perpendicular. That puts me about right there. And I can tighten this back up. And you see it's really clunky. My center point is right there. Which happens to be about so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come off center a little bit. Cut a new groove here. And I'm going to come out here and cut another one. One more out here. Because as a pendant, it's going to be uh, in my vision. This will be where I hang it, and I will do some shaping around here and sand this up. So this will be the pendant. I'll drill my hole in here, I'll do some shaping. Uh, to ease these corners a little bit and I'll get that all sanded up after the fact that I don't really want to take up a whole lot of time doing the working on sanding with this because I've got a few things I want to try but what I will do I'm going to want to park this off about right here I've got a mark where I can put this on my bandsaw and cut this off and I will have to sand this up by hand but you get the idea of what I'm going for here. Okay this is not a level piece of uh, acrylic. This was this is epoxy resin so first thing I need to do is turn it flat and anybody that's turned much resin knows that resin likes scrapers. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a scraper and just get this flat. <laughs> For those of you that are thinking about turning resin, if you haven't before, it, from based on my experience, it really likes scrapers and it likes slightly dull tools. If you try to start cutting resin with a tool right off of the right off of the grinder, it's going to want to grab more and and, and you'll it'll, you'll get a chirpy or a chippy sound. The sound you want sounds like you're rubbing gently a piece of sandpaper across the wood. That is roughly shaped, except for the edge. As long as you're getting ribbons, you know you're cutting it right. If it starts flinging chips at you, you know you're not. Now, this is a freshly sharpened gout, so I'm going to put... You, you hear that? Did you hear the squeak? Yeah, that chirpy sound. It was a, initially not cutting well, but now it is. So I'll put another one here. Right, let's see, there it goes again. It does not like really sharp tools. So now I'll do similar to what we did before, except I'm only going to move it down one and I'm going to turn it six and I'll put one here and one here see you cut kind of a now I will go I'll keep it in the same orientation this way but 
but I'll take it back to center and you'll see it's still off. So it's still off. And I'll make two more cuts. I think here. I will try to put that back in the original spot and clean this up. Wish me luck. <laughs> okay, so back in number one. Now, I have this always on jaw number one. And what I will do is I will I will wet sand uh, off camera. I will wet sand this. I wet sand all of my resins. The only way to do it. That groove got a little bigger than I wanted, but that's all right too. And all the chip out is gone. And the rest of that will sand up. But you can see the, the number of different cuts. And if this was, once this is shaped into a pendant style, it, it will have a really interesting look. This centerpiece here, this is the tenon. This part here is the tenon that fits inside here. And this clamps down on it so that it doesn't twist. When you tighten the chuck up, because you've only got two jaws on here, it actually tightens this down like it was a collet chuck, and it tightens it onto this tenon. I've got these cuts so that they don't quite protrude of this piece of three-quarter inch oak, but I, I've made several of these up because I wanted to be able to, to do more than one thing, especially for tonight. Last week, Jim said that the angle I had on this one, <laughs> it's an eccentric angle for sure, uh, he said it might be a little too eccentric. Well, it might be, but we're going to try it. Instead of this, instead of the chuck body that's in here, like this one, is is flat. I made sure it was flat on the lathe. So all of these are flat, except this one. This one is at oh, at maybe 10, 15 degrees. I didn't check it exactly, but what that's going to give you. And this is thickness, it is flat, so I'm not worried about that. But what that will give you in an exaggerated form is this. And the wood I'm using is just scrap pieces of uh, this is ash juniper for now one of those was oak but see how you don't get a complete circle because because it's angled so now let's do the same thing we did before let's move it down a notch and i'm keeping this at the zero mark on here so i'm i'm not at zero zero anymore i'm at one zero and you see that makes a little bit of difference so let's try this. I fell into the same groove. That may be funny. Yeah, I overcut it. If you practice with this and play with this some, you can figure out where to set it. I have now flipped this 180 degrees. So this should give me just exactly opposite of the ones that I just cut. And it did. You can see that you've got this double design coming in here. That's kind of a neat look. Oh my goodness, what do we have? 
I have put this on my laser. My daughter told me, she said, Dad, she said, and I didn't center this on my marks, so I'm going to have to go by eye. But my daughter told me, she said, Dad, if you want to turn things that girls are going to like, she said, more women wear earrings than they do pendants. So, that being the case, I, I burnt this design in this piece of wood today because I want to try making some cuts in here. Doing it while it's on center is easy. The tricky part is going to be when I move it off center, making them so that they look the same. So that when I cut these out on my scroll saw, I have a set of earrings that are book matched. So I've not tried this before. This is completely experimental. I may be, <laughs> let's just say relieving myself into the wind. So far, that's not bad. That's not bad. So I got it pretty close. So we'll do the same thing we did a minute ago. I'll move this one notch and I want to keep it centered. So I want to make this one here. And make this one here. Now I'm going to try to not move my tool rest and there's a reason. Because where I did those last ones, I want to make that cut there. And this cut here when I get this turned around. That way I know I'm cutting in the exact same spot except 180 out. Okay, exact same spot. So my cut goes here. And my cut goes here. See how they, that's not a bad match. It's not perfect, but it's really close. See how the, you've got the two different intersections here. The just kisses the outside here, comes in. That's pretty close. It's not a perfect book match, but I'm going to shape them a little bit smaller because I think these are a little big, but I think that's going to work. Now let's get crazy. Now I'm at two zero. I didn't make any cuts at, at zero zero. So I'll make a cut here. And I'll make a cut here. And we'll go to four. I will two more this time. That's really going to throw it out there. And my, my center point is right there. So I'm going to come in here. This thing is really propellering right now at this point. I can feel the wind off of it. So I didn't turn, I didn't turn the other chuck, the inside part, I didn't turn it at all. All I did was move the chuck down and, and you get these, these nice concentric rings all over that. Uh, in fact, I think I need one more. And I need to make this one a little bit. That was just moving it down. There was no twist in here at all. And I don't really think I want to twist it. So uh, my hat my hat is off to Jim Duxbury for this ingenious device because it is an ingenious device. There's no question about it. Because nobody likes a flat rope or tendon. You can make these into brokers too, by the way. Give it a little slope. Yeah, cut away some of the lines, but look. See how much cleaner it is now? And that's, that is a cool look. That is a cool look. 
So it, it's basically this jig is it, it is so versatile. Just think. I mean, it, anything that you can, anything you can imagine, or anything you can come up with, try it. I mean, that's all I'm going to say. Is it's, you just got to try it. It's your imagination is your only limitation. It it takes it takes turning to a, a whole different level altogether. And so there's just there's an endless number of possibilities that, that literally endless number of possibilities you can come up with on this thing. And this is the oak pendant that I did that was kind of a diamond shape, and I will be putting the hole for the top of the pendant up here. Now I'm taking some coral colored stain by Rust-Oleum and I'm basically just painting it into the grooves that I cut and then I will wipe away any excess and let that dry for a little bit. Once that has dried sufficiently, I take some similar stain by Rust-Oleum, it's called Vintage Aqua, and I'm going to go over the entirety of the front side of the piece in the aqua, being very careful not to get any inside the grooves that I've already got stained with the coral. I like this color combination because I think they go well together. After this dries sufficiently, I will turn it over and I actually applied the torch to the back of this piece of oak because I wanted to get some of the coral colored stain down inside the pores, but I didn't like how the, the burning of the oak came out so much. So I sanded it all back and then I just stained it with the coral. I took this one over to the bandsaw and I sawed it in half and luckily enough I didn't have to scroll that out because the burn went about halfway through the piece of juniper so I ended up just having to punch them out. I took some blue tape and I stuck a piece of blue tape to the fronts of each of these two pieces and I made sure that I aligned one edge. This edge had the best alignment of the grooves that I cut. So I stuck them together using super glue in between the blue tape. That way I could sand them up on the belt sander to get them the size and the shape that I wanted. And while they were still stuck together, I went ahead and drilled the small hole for the jump ring. Once I was satisfied with the overall shape and had the hole drilled, I went ahead and took them apart. The cool thing about this trick is the blue tape just peels right off of them and doesn't leave any residue. And this is what they look like. I still have to sand them up. It's going to be hand sanding for all of this, but that's okay. I'm really happy with how this turned out. Everything doesn't line up exactly, but it's really close, and I think it's close enough. The sanding is all done now and it's time to apply the finish. So I took some blue tape and super glued it together, a sticky side up so I could stick it down to my finish board and stick the pieces to that. That way the spray can doesn't blow them all over. For the pendant, I'm using semi-gloss spar polyurethane. And for the earrings, I'm going to use clear water-based polyurethane. 
and I'll apply as many coats of each as is necessary for me to be satisfied with the finish. Once the backs have dried, I'll flip them over and repeat the process on the front. And this won't be dry until tomorrow. It's just, it's staying tacky longer than it should, but that's okay. I'll flip it around and we'll put the finish on the top tomorrow. These, I've got three coats on the back and, and it's ready. This really soaks it in. I'm assuming it's going to take three coats on the front as well. Again, I'll set my timer, come back, and I will keep putting finish on this until I'm happy with it. So here are the earrings finished. I think they look really good. My name is engraved in the back. But I think they came out really nice. And I'm, I'm apparently not the only one because these have already been spoken for. Guy said, my wife's birthday's coming up next month. I want to buy them. So there's that. And here's the pendant. I still need to put one more coat of finish on it. But I really need to get this video out. So you're not going to be able to see that one finished just yet. It's this is just taking so long to dry. It's supposed to be dry to the touch in two hours. It's taken me a day and a half before I can. It's been almost two days since I sprayed the back and it's still tacky. So I don't, I don't get it. And I'm doing another demo this coming Wednesday for WorldWideWoodTurners.org. <laughs> I think I'm going to go back to that eccentric jig and do something else that I haven't done yet. I'm going to practice on it first and we'll see what happens, but I, I think I'm going to go back to that and, and try something that you might find intriguing, so stay tuned for that.